Allen and Coleman, the top four once again this evening. I mean, that is where majority of their RBIs come from, save for the lone number six batter, Cantu, excuse me, Aguilar. Um, but that is where all their power comes from and their momentum. And Houston is very much a team that they live and die by their runs, but they also live and die by their momentum. And they weren't able to get that started yesterday. Their Boutte stands in to lead things off. 316 hitter for the year, seven homers, 22 runs driven in, hits a one hopper that's speared by Avery Hodge. And she throws over to Alina Torres to get the first out. So a little different look for the Sooners defensively. Cassidy Pickering is in left. Riley Boone plays center with Jada Coleman not in the starting lineup. And Ella Parker is out in right. The infield is Alyssa Brito at third. Tiare Jennings, the shortstop, as you just saw, Avery Hodge. And Alina Torres comprise the right side of the infield. And Kinsey Hansen, the captain, is behind the plate. Kennedy Thomas is in. She lines one foul just past third. Alyssa Brito down there at third base. Kennedy Thomas, the center fielder. 386 hitter with a home run and 25 runs driven in. Kennedy Thomas was one for three in last night's game. Bouncing ball. Jennings waits back just a hitch but is able to easily throw out Kennedy Thomas for out number two. Is that a recipe that we should see from Nicole May getting balls hit? Maybe hard sometimes, but generally on the ground? Absolutely, and any time that you are generating ground balls out of a lineup that essentially has power throughout, you're making good pitches. So really good job and start so far by May, but just needing to continue to take advantage of the aggressiveness from this Houston offense and Ground ball day is a good day. She will deal with Jazz Rollin here with the bases clear and two gone. Houston Rollin. being aggressive early in the count, these first two batters. Nicole May, she is a pitcher that likes to pound the zone. So it favors up with Houston, but her late break, her late movement is what gets her. What a beautiful diving backhanded stab and throw by Avery Hodge. A spectacular close to the top of the first inning by Sooner second baseman Avery Hodge. Houston held without a hit. And Nicole May faces the minimum in the top of the first inning. We'll give you the Sooner batting lineup as we go to the bottom of the first inning with no score in Norman. This is Sooner softball from Love's Field on Sooner Vision from ESPN+. Plus. to the plate, no score, bottom of the first inning, and the freshman Ella Parker will lead things off against right-hander, left-hander, I should say, Shelby Smith for Houston tonight. Houston's pitching staff's been hit hard by injuries this year. Parker kind of got that one off the end of the bat, but flares it as she slices a single into left field to start this game. And Lorenzo, the shortstop, she was in a little bit against Parker. I'm not sure, Parker doesn't typically slap. She will maybe lay down a bunt, but she is very much a power hitter. She's somebody, as a shortstop, you don't necessarily want to be one or two steps in. Tiara Jennings in, Sooner shortstop. Another good night last night, two for three with a walk and a run scored. Tiari has hit 10 home runs against Big 12 Conference foes, 16 for the year. She's second in the conference in RBIs and fifth in hits with 53. Just another remarkable season. Rolls this one past the third baseman, Rollins, who just got a piece of it. And it is back-to-back -back singles for Parker and Jennings. 
in the Sooner first. Back to back hits here to start the ball game, but you're seeing the the ball off the bat for Ella Parker. A play that potentially could have made, been made had Lorenzo been placed a little bit differently. Tara Jennings getting a little jammed on the inner part of the play, but finding a way to get it through the 5-6 hole. So here is Alyssa Brito. First two Sooners have reached base in the first. And ball one is low. With the injuries to Paris Lehman and also Nicole Botto, Shelby Smith has had to shoulder a lot of the pitching load for this staff. She did not pitch in last night's game, though, for Houston. We saw Taylor Edwards, Tamia Waiters, and Gigi Solis. Talked about this yesterday. We were really impressed with Waiters and Solis. Just the way that they were able to move their pitches around the zone, keep Oklahoma a little bit off balance. It wasn't because they were squaring up a lot of hard hits. It was just things that were falling or slow ground balls that allowed a runner to leg it out. Brito shows bunt. That ball squirts out of the glove of Coleman. The runners were on the move and they will easily be able to take a base. So Parker to third and Jennings into second base. That aggressiveness early. We had a discussion with Coach Gasso at the start of the series. And one thing she said almost immediately was, I'm going to take the call card out more often and get runners in motion, call some hit and runs. And we just saw the double steal. So there's that aggressiveness coming from Coach Gasso trying to get things moving. And it's a four-pitch walk to Alyssa Brito. Sooners load the bases with nobody out. And Alina Torres will get a crack. She had a home run, a three-run home run. Has the opportunity to have a four-run right here. At least get an RBI, no outs. And really yesterday, and, and, and Nicole, you spoke about this a little bit, but run rule victory for the Sooners in game one. Multiple pitchers in the circle for Houston, but really it was not it was not a bombshell offensively for the Sooners. It really wasn't. Torres had the three-run shot, but... Until getting to the fifth, sixth inning, that was really and truly kind of the, the one difference maker. Now, Oklahoma had 12 hits, but the only extra base hit was the home run that you spoke of as we see the eight-tier head coach of the Cougars, Kristen Vesley, the former Oklahoma Sooner All-American. When she left the Sooner program, when she graduated, she was first on Oklahoma's all-time hits list. She is now tied for fourth with Tiare Jennings, who tied her last night, as a matter of fact. Here is Torres. As Nicole mentioned, three-run home run for Alina last night. Speaking of an alum, Hope Troutwine, she's a first-year pitching coach for Houston, did an excellent job with her pitchers. The pitch calling is immaculate, but there has to be trust between that battery of the pitcher and the catcher and what your coach is calling. And right now, Smith, she's just gotten into a little bit of trouble. There's Hope Troutwine. He's on the 2022 Sooner National Championship team. 0-2 to Torres. Nobody out, base is loaded. For Smith, her cadence, her rhythm, whenever she pitches, is slower. She takes a little bit of getting her sign, getting the signal. As she's going around, that wind-up is slower. She's trying to lull these Sooners into getting out in front. Bouncing ball to first. Coming home with it is Cantu to Coleman. They will get the force play and take down the lead runner for the first out. And on the return throw to first, Torres is safe. So Ella Parker cut down at home for the first out, and the bases remain loaded. And just as you, Nicole, were kind of talking about Smith almost lulling these hitters to sleep, opportunity for Torres to really get a pitch that she can handle. And bases loaded, nobody out. So many options to find something to potentially take the other way, something you can get in the air for a sacrifice fly and finding a way to push a run across. Here's Kenzie Hansen. 
three for four with three runs scored last night. Did you get to the bottom of the bat story, Nicole? <laughs> the, the bat that she's got now? I did not. Okay. I did not get to the bottom of that. We have to put investigative reporty, reporter Christopher Plank on that at some point. <laughs> see if he Plank can, probably already knows. He probably does. going to give him an assignment post-game to ask Coach about it. Hansen slashes this one into right center field. It will plate two. Scoring are Jennings and Brito. So a two-run single to right by Kenzie Hansen, giving Oklahoma a quick 2-0 lead in the first. Kenzie Hansen has been so, so consistent. We talked about it yesterday. Just the way her at bats, yeah, she's going to have those home runs, but even her miss hits, you can tell she's scraping, she's battling. They're tough at bats. Just embodies the hard hat mentality of Patty Gasso and the program as Cassidy Pickering stands in. Torres at second and Hansen at first after the two run single. Pickering was 0 for 1, but did walk two times last night. This is 23 runs driven in now for Kenzie Hansen. Remember, she missed eight games getting her knee healthy. And Hansen's really come back, and it's almost as if she didn't miss a beat. Having that seven, eight game stint where she was not in the lineup and working on getting back and getting healthy, but it's as if she didn't not see pitches for, <laughs> you know, That's for nearly two MO. weeks. And it's just, <laughs> all right, back in it. Let's go. Sooners two runs on three hits. Pickering takes down and in. Think of what Hanson did last year when she had appendicitis, mm -hmm. had to have that recovery period, came back against what was expected to be a really intense game against UCLA. And her very first at bat is just a, monster home run smoked into straightaway center field Thomas is back but it's over her head Torres will score stopping at third is Kenzie Hansen and Cassidy Pickering converts an RBI double to straightaway center field to give Oklahoma a three nothing lead what a composed at bat by Pickering the freshman waiting to get a pitch that she can handle. And you could see a little bit of a change of speeds from Shelby Smith and Pickering doing such a nice job of reloading, letting the ball get deep and driving it right back up the middle. Four hits in this inning for the Sooners. That's the first one that's really and truly been squared up. Yeah, and I, I love the middle part of this lineup. With that hit, Cassie Pickering, she scores two runs. She moves into fourth. RBIs for Oklahoma in the lineup and it's with that four five six that kind of middle the heart of it a lot of power a lot of consistency and we were talking about this yesterday DJ but as a freshman doesn't matter if you are playing a lot not playing a lot whenever you get to the second half of conference the tail end of it you're not a freshman anymore you have experienced everything you are familiar you've played nerves are out Cassie Pickering from day one literally her first at bat <laughs> opened up the season with a grand slam she's just been so so good the key for her and to any freshman or first time starter is not letting that success put pressure on you of, okay, I did so good. I need to continue to do that. But being able to maintain yourself and maintain whatever it is that you're thinking, whatever it is that helps you stay calm. Three runs on four hits, the double by Pickering, the runners in second and third for Avery Hodge, who made a spectacular play defensively to close out the top of the first. And we talk a ton. We were actually talking yesterday and Hodge not getting the start has gotten some spot starts here throughout the season, but is so smooth defensively and does such a tremendous job up the middle. Makes difficult plays look really easy. I mean, the play she made in the first inning, great angle. Odds last night also had a base hit. 
batting 326 on the year. Everybody a little bundled up. Patty Gasso's got the jacket on tonight. Overcast, no rain, and no rain threat in the forecast. As this one is down and in, we had the OU football spring game wrapped up about now an hour and a half ago. And it's a little bit of a spillover crowd. We're worried, you know, about 30, 45 minutes before first pitch, but it's pretty full once again at Love's Field. And there's a walk to Avery Hodge. Base is loaded once again for the Sooners. That's the second walk to go along with four hits and a lot of trouble for Shelby Smith getting out of the first. And that's tough. And one thing that we saw from the Houston pitching staff in game one were high walk number seven in game one and hit by pitch as well. So you can see these Houston pitchers at times trying to nibble on the plate, but then we're also seeing those big misses as well. Riley Ludlam in there as the designated player for the Sooners tonight. Ludlam was two for three in last night's game. Sooners did not strike out at the plate last night. They left nine runners on base. You read my mind, Chad. That's yes. exactly where I went. I'm going, it left a lot of runners on base. <laughs> it was a little soft contact as the game got later on and the off-speed pitches came from the Cougars. But no strikeouts. And again, that's a credit to the pitching. Mm -hmm. The score doesn't reflect that, but that's a credit to Houston's pitching. Right now, Smith, it just feels like she is pitching very careful. And as a pitcher... I know whenever you pitch careful, <laughs> it doesn't turn you, out well. You either miss wide or you miss over the plate. Yeah, very methodical coming from Shelby Smith in the circle. Downstairs to Ludlam and a 2 2 count. What an addition Riley Ludlam's been, the Furman transfer, Southern Conference player of the year. Just a veteran, professional type of collegiate athlete, if you will. Spelling Kenzie Hansen behind the plate and really swinging it well, batting 344. That one bounds away from Coleman again. And a full count with no place to put Riley Ludlow. It's a dangerous place to play for Shelby Smith. Again, working behind and counts a lot so far in this inning. Two walks in the first. Eighth batter of the inning is Ludlam. And we'll do it all over again. Looking over to the Houston bullpen. There's a little bit of action, but it doesn't look like anybody is near being hot, being ready to go if they're called in. GG to the warm ups. So Lee's getting some work in. Saw a little bit of time in game one. Another payoff pitch. Roll to third. Rollin will come home with it, and it's dropped by Coleman. Kinsey Hansen scores, and now sliding not around the tag is Cassidy Pickering. She'll be tagged out by Taria Coleman. And Patty was... Gasso comes and says, did you get tagged? Yeah. And I think she said, yes, I did. So it, I don't think the Sooners will ask for a review. And I thought for a moment they would. Um, our view up here, it did not look like Coleman tagged her. And Coach Gasso immediately, did she tag you? I think Coach Gasso saw the same thing. You could see Pickering go automatically after the slide. Yes, I'm safe. And then after she goes, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> she got trying me. to buy the call, wasn't she? <laughs> It looks like Tria Coleman just feeling it a little bit. That was a fantastic diving play. Pickering, she has a lot of speed, caught everyone a little bit off guard. You weren't quite expecting that as soon as the ball slipped out of her glove from Kenzie Hansen sliding into home. Didn't miss a beat, but went, got it, dove after, got the play. That was a great effort, great tag. So Ludlam will get credit for an RBI on the ground out, but out number two is recorded from 
Rollin to Coleman. And the Sooners with runners in first and second. And the ninth batter of the inning will be the center fielder tonight, Riley Boone. Pops this one up on the infield. The shortstop, Lorenzo, will take it near the bag at third. And the inning is over. But it's a big inning for the Sooners. Four runs on four hits here in the middle of <laughs> April. I don't know how I feel about fall in April. Well, it was, it was I don't the like it. football <laughs> game, so you had to import the weather. Okay. To, no. to, and tailgate. It needs to be warmer tomorrow. Listen, it's softball no season, not football season. <laughs> the weather needs to reflect that. <laughs> the Colmay's first pitch is low to Terea Coleman. Hitter. She was held silent yesterday, but she's a dangerous hitter. Mm -hmm. She has a great eye. The Oklahoma transfer, she was fantastic last year for Houston. Came in, made a big impact right away. Just athletic. We saw the play that she made at home just a couple plays ago. She's athletic. She's mobile, but she has a great eye and a lot, a lot of power. 39 runs driven in, leads this Houston team, and Ranks ninth in the Big 12. Two and one. And Kristen Besley said, speaking of that, last year kind of served as a freshman year, really, for Coleman, even though she's now a junior. Didn't play all that much on Oklahoma's 2022 national title team. Got in a little bit of action as a Sooner before she transferred to Houston. Coleman, that one hit the camera. That foul ball just went through the opening. Rattled it a bit. Natalie Davis, <laughs> who is not a camera operator. She can do a little bit of everything, though. <laughs> trying to uh, reset the camera <laughs> to the right angle. I think we're okay over there. <laughs> I think that's what she just said, too. I, I think it's fine. <laughs> if you ask Natalie <laughs> Davis to do anything, she will take care of it. She gets camera operator pay for the night, I think, too, as Coleman strikes out. First strikeout for Nicole May tonight. Man, that off speed. That has been the key in game one. Game two, that is what we want to see. Didn't see a ton from Shelby Smith, who is now coming up to the plate, but Nicole May just really pull the string on that one. Here is Shelby Smith now pitching. Two way player for this team. Tough duty. What's it like, Nicole, to be a two way player? <laughs> You are pulled in a lot of different directions. And so to be able to perform the way that you want to, heads up fans, to be able to perform to the level that you want to as a two-way player, you have to commit yourself not only to accepting the fact you're never going to get as much time in practice as everyone else in hitting or pitching or defense or whatever it may be, but you're going to have to commit yourself to putting in a little bit of extra work to be able to be on par with everything else. Smith had a hit last night, a base hit and a strikeout. Oklahoma winning eight nothing in six innings last night. For the Sooner pitching staff shutout number 20, which leads the country. And Maxwell really solid in game one and you know, I had the opportunity to speak with Coach Rocha earlier today, and, you know, she's like, yep, she felt good about it, but I think there were things that she still wanted to tighten up. And, um, you know, that's part of the reason Kelly Maxwell is so good, right? She throws a three-hit shutout against an offense like Houston and goes, yeah, I could have been better. So Nicole May, solid in the first inning here, but falling behind the first two batters she's seen. So a little conversation between Kinsey Hansen and Nicole May. Now Kelly Maxwell moved her record to 14 and one last night, five innings, two hits, no runs, three walks, and five strikeouts. She went over 100 strikeouts for the season last night. Another excellent play by Avery Hodge to pounce upon that ball and throw out Shelby Smith. Big time. Avery Hodge showing why. She's getting the start up the middle. But she gets just so smooth in everything that she does defensively. We can say it over and over and over. But that's a big-time play by 
behind your pitcher, working behind in the count, 3-1. She's recorded three of the five outs that Oklahoma has made defensively, and two of them have been two of the best plays that we've seen this season. Yeah, those are hard hits to the back end to be able to stay low on that because those aren't just ground balls. Those are balls that kind of have a weird hop to them to be able to stay down, catch those balls, and they're taking her away from the play. She's kind of ranging over, being able to make that quick transition. I mean, Avery Hodge, we talked about it during break, but she gives me a cis bait feeling over at second base. Just great range, great glove control. 2-0 pitch is in there to Bree Cantu. Cantu was 0-for-1 with a walk in last night's game. Cantu, she leads the team in RBIs with 40. Coleman, she's in second with 39, but a lot of power in that sixth spot. In the air, fairly deep to right center field. Riley Boone out there, tracks and bangs up against the wall, but pulls it in, and the inning is over. Deep fly ball. The first will lead off again here in the second. Swings at the first pitch, just as she did in the first inning. Lifts one to left, and it's checked down by Amanda Carden for the first out. And one thing that this Houston pitching staff has done a good job of, and again, the scoreboard hasn't always reflected it, but there have been times that as a whole, they have gotten these Sooner hitters on their front foot. Smith doing the same thing and does not have overpowering, overpowering velocity. But even some of the base hits we've seen have been little flares. And Sooner hitters a tad early. Tiara Jennings had a base hit and a run scored her first time. Solo fourth on Oklahoma's all-time hits list now is Tiari. She is six hits from 300 for her career and three runs driven in. That's a from nice 300. clean number. <laughs> I believe she would be the fifth player in collegiate softball history with 300 runs driven in. Smashes this one on a line to center, but Thomas ranges over and puts away the second out. That was squared up, but out. And Kenny Thomas, we've seen her. She's had a busy series so far out there in center field, but doing a good job of tracking things down. But you can just see the swings that Jennings is putting on the ball. The base that she had to take fourth on the all-time hit list ricocheted almost over to Kenny Thomas in center field from yep. left yesterday. She hit it so hard. Banged into the wall and rolled across the outfield. Here's Brito, who walked and scored in the first. Brito was hitless last night, 0 for 3. 48 runs scored is third in the Big 12, and 44 runs driven in ranks her third. She also has 15 home runs, which is second in the Big 12 behind only her teammate, Tiare Jennings. That one foul up the third base side. I've noticed whenever Smith goes in, she typically stays away from Oklahoma. That is a game plan. But because she stays away, she lulls him to sleep. Whenever she does go in, they're not able to square it up. I think Jennings had one where she was able to flare it over, but again, not squaring it up, just being able to get something tight in on the hands that they're not expecting. Line down the right field line, diving is Holsey. It's past her, rolling to the base of the wall. Brito's got her wheels on, churning for third, and has a triple with two down in the Sooner second. Such a good piece of hitting from Brito. And Nicole, just as you're talking about Smith distorting timing, working in, working out, we saw Brito make the adjustment and let the ball get deep and take it oppo. That's the only 
way the Sooners are going to square things up off of Smith is to let the ball get deep and get late. Great adjustment mid at bat from Alyssa Brito. Third triple of the year for Brito. And here's Alina Torres with two down. Wax that one foul. Going back to that last play, Holsey diving on the right field line. To me, that is just a tough play because the competitor in me says, go for it. But it's also know the score, know who Alyssa Brito is. You don't want that ball to get past you. That's the number one rule. Don't let the ball get to the fence. Well, and coupled with, you could just see the line drive dying. Right, and again, you gotta, you commend the hustle, you commend laying out and going for the catch. However, could have been held to a two out single. Big difference. Two strikes on Torres now. Torres reached base safely on a fielder's choice play first time and came in to score. Four runs in the first, looking for another run in inning number two are the Sooners. Bouncing ball to second, and the inning is over as Aguilar takes care of Torres. Sooners get a two-out triple by a little bit later. Many finals in already. This game a little bit later, starting at six tonight. It's due to the spring game that Oklahoma had. A lot of a lot of sports going on here, in Norman. It's a busy weekend on campus. Oklahoma baseball is out in Provo, Utah, taking on BYU this weekend. This pitch a little bit too tall. Bethany Aguilar, the second baseman, facing Nicole May. Nays faced the minimum to this point. One strikeout. Foul tip. And if you're Houston, the message that you're conveying to your teammates, even though she's faced a minimum, there have been three really hard hits Continue to stay where you're at. Continue to stick to that same game plan because sooner or later, something has to break through. And I think to that point, Nicole, still staying aggressive, but also being very conscious of your pitch selection. When we go back to the second inning, Nicole May did not work ahead of a single batter that she faced. So Houston is a very aggressive team offensively, but may need to kind of rein that in a hair. There's strikeout number two for Nicole May as she fans Bethany Aguilar to begin the third. To that point, that was a rise ball well out of the zone, but you get the crowd clapping. There's momentum. You can taste it. You're swinging. You just missed one before that. And good late break on the rise coming from May, but again, Houston needs to read kind of how things are rolling as well and pay attention to how much Nicole May is in the strike zone. Brooke Lorenzo, the shortstop is in, fouling the first pitch off. Lorenzo was over two with a strikeout last night. Cole May, 11 wins on the year. Eighteen and zero last year. Fifteen and two two years ago. The junior from Pleasanton, California. Lorenzo is one of the 11 Power Five Conference transfers on this Houston roster. She came in from Ole Miss, originally out of Katy, Texas. 
Spent 2021, or 22, I should say, at Ole Miss. And then last year became a Cougar. Second season as the starting shortstop. Swing and a miss, back-to-back -back strikeouts for May and her third of the night. Great change of speeds coming from May. And speaking of adjustments, we're starting to see some adjustments from May in the circle, getting back in the strike zone, taking advantage of the Houston aggressiveness. Throw strikes. Let your defense work. Paige Halsey, the right fielder, is in, swinging at the first pitch. tall this time to Halsey. Grad student from Tumball, Texas. Fifth year at Houston. Super competitive, says Kristen Vesley. Kind that you want in your program. It's a nice pitch on the inside half by Nicole May. I mean, that one just paints the river. She's been using a lot of that screwball, drop ball action today from May. So that inside to the lefty, a little bit unexpected. It stays 0-2 to Paige Halsey. So Oklahoma staff leading the Big 12 in earned run average, 1.57, 20 shutouts with number 20 coming last night here against Houston. And they got a no hitter from Kirsten Deal mm -hmm. back on Tuesday night at Hall of Fame Stadium in Oklahoma City against Tulsa. There she is. <laughs> what a performance that was. She said, just trusting Coach Rocha and the process afterward. It's been really awesome to watch Deal, and you can just see her taking everything in and continuing to learn. Nicole May strikes out the side in the fourth, has four strikeouts on the night, and her loves field. That's a walk of champions, isn't it? From the Palace on the Prairie Gaylord Family Memorial Stadium down here. Kinsey Hansen is in. Kinsey Hansen had a two-run single and scored a run in the four-run Oklahoma first inning. You know, that black bat is growing on me. <laughs> I think it's growing on her, too. You're obsessed with the bat, Maggie. I just want to know. Well, so far, she is four for five with four runs scored and two runs batted in with that bat. It's if not it the bat. If it just started yesterday, right? It didn't. It wasn't in play for the Tulsa game on Tuesday. I think she's Can't been using that. it for a little bit. Okay. Back up the middle, backhanded by Aguilar. The throw not in time. And Kenzie Hansen is two for two. Two for two with a pair of just finding a way to do enough. I mean, her single back in the first as well, a little bit of a flare and pushed it out and Legged out the infield single. Six hits now for the Sooners. And Cassidy Pickering, who had an RBI double to straightaway center field her first time, is up. And I'll say this, Shelby Smith for Houston. I mean, six hits on the board for the Sooners. Four runs. I mean, you can't argue with that. However, Smith has really done a good job of getting in on the hands. I mean, same thing there to Hanson. Not something she could hit hard. It just a little ground ball with eyes. Enough to get her on base. Seen so much of that today off of Smith. To that point, she's been doing such a good job of lulling those hitters and then coming inside. Mm -hmm. That's the art of pitching, right? Distort timing, speed them up, slow them down. Pickering whacks this one in the air. Foul. Two balls and a strike now to Cassidy Pickering. We talked about this freshman group 
that'll be relied upon so heavily in the coming years with Oklahoma heavy on seniors. But Pickering in there and Ella Parker in the lineup, each with a hit and contributing. Pass the first baseman Cantu down the right field line into the corner. Patty Gasso waves Kenzie Hansen around third. She will score. The throw comes to third, and Pickering is safe with an RBI triple. Cassidy Pickering doing what she's done so often this season. But the freshman, she didn't even hesitate coming around second base. Second triple of the day from Sooner Bats say this, Pickering, of the seven hits on the board, she's got two of the hardest hit balls we've seen here from this Sooner offense here today. She has a double and a triple, this Pickering, and she's the third with an RBI, and here's Avery Hodge, who walked her first time. And both of those have come from two sides of the plate, which I think is really great because being able to sit and wait on that pitch on the outside, she gets that ball dead center. Next time she comes up to bat, she goes, I'm not gonna get that again. Let me be ready for the end. Hodge bunts one, it's a safety squeeze that goes foul. But have to look again and just make sure that Coleman did not touch that in fair territory. And they're saying that she didn't. It's a good job by Coleman. Heads up, reading the spin of the ball off the bat. A temptation to go out and reach yes. out right away, especially whenever you have somebody like Avery Hodge in the box who is so speedy. Every moment counts. Such a composed play by Coleman, Coleman behind the plate. Hodge swinging away this time. And an 0-2 count on her. Reaches out and pokes this one past Rollin into left. And Avery Hodge drives in a run. Pickering is in to score. Sooners with two runs in the inning, and they have a 6 0 lead. And Hodge on the two strike count, going up to get a pitch up in the zone. I'm taking it the other way. The sequence that Smith set up for Hodge was perfect. She had her in that 0 2 was off the plate. The only thing, though, because it was elevated, Hodge was out in front. Her barrel was out in front of her. She waved at that pitch. But if she's able to lower that pitch, I think that's a ground ball. I agree. And that's something that holds up a run and also gets out at first base. Two runs on three hits for the Sooners. And a chance to do more damage. This time is called by head coach Kristen Vesley. She comes out to visit with Michael Parker, the plate umpire. Sooner's going to pinch hit Quincy Lilio here for Riley Ludlam. And some changes being noted in this conversation between Michael Parker and Kristen Vesley. Looks like going to have a pitching change to begin with. Again, the Sooners will pinch it, but Taylor Edwards is going to come on and do the pitching now. So she replaces Shelby Smith. Smith just getting battered around by the Sooners. Six runs on eight hits, and she leaves with nobody out in the third. And Avery Hodge over there at first base. And Edwards got the start for the Cougars last night in game one. Threw two innings, gave up three runs on four hits, all those earned. But for Edwards, the night felt a little bit short, putting herself in some tough situations with a pair of walks. But the Sooners really, outside of one swing of the bat, did not square Edwards up too much early, just had a hard time finding the zone at times. So for now, the numbers on Smith, two innings, eight hits, six runs, five of those earned with two walks and a strikeout. They went back and gave an error 
on the play where Riley Ludlam hit the ball to third. Throw came home, and originally Coleman dropped the ball, and the Sooners scored a run, but they came back and actually got it out on the play. But there was an error charged to Coleman. So one of the runs unearned for Smith tonight. Edwards, as DJ said last night, she ended up being the losing pitcher. Two innings, four hits, three runs were all earned with two walks and no strikeouts. And so after two innings against the Sooners last night, she'll go to work here against Quincy Lilio, the pinch hitter. Sooner fans out in full force today. I think this pitching change is needed. And if you're Edwards, after the outing last night, when, like you said, only one that was really, really squared up, you want to come back, redeem yourself a little bit, Try and see if you can help your team by being efficient through the zone. That's going to be the big thing. Second thing, being able to work that off speed. And not something that Edwards was able to do effectively last night was execute the off speed pitch and really and truly a big piece of what made her night short. This pitch a little bit up and away to Lilio. We did see Quincy Lilio in last night's game. Drew a walk and scored a run. Batting for Riley Ludlam in the number eight spot. Three and O oh to Lilio. So similar to what we saw in game one, again, Edwards has got to hammer the zone, especially coming in out of the bullpen, your number one job, throw strikes. Edwards is a transfer from LSU. Spent three seasons there. Originally out of Marrero, Louisiana. Yesterday did a pretty good job of keeping the ball down. And 
or CNY right now. Riley Boone, Avery Hodge taking two pitches up and just absolutely hammering them the other way. Four hits in the inning and nine in the game for the Sooners. Ella Parker has one of them. When she singled back in the first, she's also fly to left field. So she bats for the third time in three innings. Couldn't hold up. And the count is 0-2 on the Sooner right fielder. And that's two back-to-back -back off speeds. Talk about making the team adjust. You just saw a hard drop increase in speed, and then all of a sudden she goes with two floaters. She's driven in 37 runs. She's got 41 hits and 37 runs driven in. And Gattis, all square, two and two now. I love that stat. I mean, we've talked so much about these freshmen and Pickering and Parker and the opportunities that they've gotten. But as a freshman, to have that poise with runners in scoring position, not trying to do too much, and work an account here. 0 2, bring it back all the way full. No place to put her. Oklahoma with two runs in the inning already. And no outs. gets credit for the RBI on the walk. Avery Hodge is in to score. And the Sooners lead it 7 nothing now. Fourth walk delivered by Houston Pitching. You can just kind of see a little bit from this Houston defense. The quiet, just trying to find a way to catch a breath and tough spot here with bases loaded. Tiara Channing singled and scored in the first and then lined out to the center fielder Kennedy Thomas in the second. She is the seventh batter of the inning and still no outs. One and one to Tiara Jennings. Oklahoma, the tune from yesterday to today is not only ignite the fire, but continue it, being able to work through everything. That one slipped out of her hand. It goes backward. Coming in to score will be Quincy Lilio. And Riley Boone goes to third base. That was bizarre. Not something to see happen often, and you could just see the reaction from Edwards almost immediately of, you know, it, there's not a lot you can do when that happens, but you can just kind of feel the wheels falling off a little bit here in the third for Houston. This is smoked to left field and caught by the lunging Lair Butte. Riley Boone will tag from third and come in to score. That was crushed. So after the wild pitch to score a run, Boone scores on the sacrifice fly by Tiare Jennings. And it's 9-0 Oklahoma. Back to back at bats for Jennings where she has just absolutely squared a pitch up. Here's Alyssa Brito. That was the first out of the inning. 
Jennings gets credit for the first RBI of the night, and this one is drilled into left. It lands in front of Butte, and Brito has her second hit. She's been on base all three times. You know, Mendez, second inning in this game that the Sooners have batted around, this feels a little bit more like that relentless offense that you're so used to seeing from the Sooners. I mean, just passing the bat, not trying to do too much. I mean, nine runs on the board right now. There hasn't been a ball. Leave the yard. Just flaring singles all over the place. Olivia Torres, the ninth batter of the inning. She's 0 for 2 with the run scored in this game. She's got out in front just a little bit on her last two at bats. You're her, you're probably thinking set up your timing for something to right field, right center. There's a strike from Edwards. But to your point, absolutely, it is relentless, but Oklahoma yesterday, they just, they run ruled, mm -hmm. but they left a ton of runners on. You can tell this is a goal for them this game. Not fielded cleanly by Edwards, and everybody will be safe on the error. to third, Brito to second, and Alina Torres is safe on the air, which is the second of the ball game charged to Houston. Like you said, DJ, you can just feel the wheels coming off just a little bit. This timeout is a way to reset, get back together. And you can see Coach Vesley making her way out of the dugout. There's been movement in the Houston bullpen So, as it looks like we're going to see a pitching change, but you also, if you're Houston, still got a game to go in this series. You're already dealing with a depleted pitching staff. You've got to try to stop the bleeding, but you also have got to be strategic with how you're using your arms to give yourself, not to say that this game is over, but I mean, nine run cushion as this game is getting a little bit deep. You've got to maybe start looking ahead tomorrow of how you plan to use your pitchers. Well, we saw that Tamaya Waiters jogged in from the bullpen to the dugout. And now the change, I think, is being made official by Kristen Vesley. And we will see Tamaya Waiters. We saw Waiters in last night's game, and she was pretty effective. An inning and a third, three hits and three earned runs. It was two walks and two strikeouts. The walks a problem, as we said, seven walks issued by Houston pitching last night. And so we see the third Houston pitcher of the night in three innings. One out, Oklahoma has batted nine and about to send their 10th batter of the inning. We'll recap the scoring. Pickering tripled home Kenzie Hansen. Avery Hodge with an RBI single to make it 6-0. Ella Parker, a bases loaded walk, then a wild pitch scored Quincy Lilio and Jerry Jennings drove home Riley Boone with a sacrifice fly here in the inning to make it 9 nothing. Five runs home on five hits and an error in the third. The background, you can see Vesley talking to her infield. The message here not only is, all right, back up your pitcher, get us out of this inning, but I think it's also bases loaded. Let's make sure that we're getting it out somewhere because we don't want this to steamroll any more than it has. Let's make sure we're getting sure outs. You can just see the energy from this Houston infield a little bit. And you know part of that conversation, like you said, Mindy, is get behind your pitchers. But... With all of that, one thing Waiters did a good job of at times yesterday was using her defense. Generated some pop-ups, got these Sooner hitters out on their front foot. Of all the pitchers that were in the circle in game one for Houston, Waiters used her off speed the most effectively. So here's Kinsey Hansen, who's two for two, with two runs driven in and two runs scored. Had a two-run single in the first. 
And then earlier this inning had a single and scored on Pickering's triple. First pitch off speed. That's what they saw a ton from Waiters yesterday. Kinsey Hansen, a little early, but she did a good job of holding her body back, being able to hold that load. Hansen batting 429 now. 23 runs driven in. She's cracked seven home runs. Down in the count, 0 2 here against Waiters. To my Waiters, a transfer from the University of Texas Arlington. Pitched there last year, originally from the Colony, Texas. Nicole, how many did we say from the Houston area that have transferred in? As this is slowly rolled to second, Aguilar's throw to first is in time. Ella Parker will score on an RBI ground out by Kenzie Hansen, who's driven in three, and the Sooner lead is now 10 nothing. And when we were talking about it in game one, I mean, the amount of transfers coming into Houston who were Houston area natives. I mean, you can just see this coaching staff taking advantage of players maybe who left home, wanted to come back. Sooner's going to, I believe, pinch hit here. And they will. Patty Gasso will start getting some bench players in there. Hannah Cora will be the batter for Pickering. Pickering had a good night, a double and a triple. She was bidding for the cycle. But now Cora will hit for her. She already got the tough one. The triple is probably the toughest of all of them. Sooners have two triples in this game. One for Brito and one from Pickering. It's a nice location from Waiters. I think the biggest thing we saw from Waiters and Solis yesterday was they looked like they were pitching free. With nothing to lose, they were just going at hitters. Speaking of going at hitters. There you go. <laughs> Literal. That's going at them. So core hit by pitch. And the bases are loaded again with two outs now. And Avery Hodge will bat. Avery Hodge has been on base twice. Walked in the first. And then singled and scored in the second. Drove in a run. She drove in Pickering earlier this inning. That was run number six. It's this one in the air to left, backing up, and just squeezing it is Lair Butte, who's now out in left field, and the inning is over. But the Sooners... Or an evening, I should say. It's chilly. You know, chance of rain, and people still coming out. I will say this. Of the over 4,500 fans in attendance here, they were all on their feet trying to get a T-shirt. It's and crazy. <laughs> T-shirts. You could try to give away a car. You give away a car. Nobody would stand up. They wouldn't think they could win the car. Yeah. A, tea, a hot dog. It's accessible. That. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. It's accessible. The Good hot call, dog. You have to be in for the hot dog. Come yeah. on. A free snack at a stadium? You don't get those. <laughs> you don't get those. they're not cheap. <laughs> they are not. This one smashed back up the middle. That'll be the first hit of the night. It comes in the leadoff spot from Lair Butte, who had grounded the second previous to this. Sooners have some defensive changes out there. Hannah Core is now in left. Quincy Lilio is playing right. And I believe that's it for now. So a leadoff single for Butte brings Kennedy Thomas to the plate. And if you're May, I mean, you got a 10 run cushion, but something that I really want to see from Nicole May on the back half here is to really be deliberate with your spots. You've got a Houston team that swings it well and nothing to lose at this point. You're down 10 runs, take your hacks and try to get some sort of momentum. So Nicole May has got to be very deliberate with her spots here in the fourth. see the hacks coming from Houston. Top half of this lineup as well. 
Absolutely, and you're also at that point in the game, we talked about this, the top half of the lineup for Houston, they do the most production. We mentioned it yesterday, they score most of their runs in the first or fourth inning. Mm -hmm. We're in the fourth. Nicole May has gone through the lineup minimum face so far. But that top half of the lineup gets a hit. That's how they lead. They're right now, Thomas, she has a 3-1 count. They are what produces the momentum, produces the run, produces the energy. And we've talked a lot about a lot about this. This is a Houston team that just flat out tries to outscore people. Ten runs does not bother this Houston team. I mean, we've seen so many scores throughout the season for this ball club. 12 to 10, 10 8. So this is a team that will continue to swing it. They've been in these situations numerous times throughout the season. Full count pitch to Thomas. Popped up. Shallow left. That's core. One away. And that's that deliberate spot I'm talking about. Getting in on the hands of Thomas. Jazz Rollin will be the batter. Rollin grounded out to Avery Hodge. Her first time. Rollin, one of the transfers. This is her third stop on her collegiate path as this one skims the glove of Hanson and skitters back to the back screen. Butte will move up a base. Looks like Hanson was handcuffed on that one. Just mislocation, miss spot. Maybe thought it was a different pitch. Yeah, you can see her get crossed. Seasons at Missouri was on the all SEC freshman team in 2019, then didn't play in 2021, transferred to Arizona State and played there two seasons. Last year batted 306 with 10 home runs. So she's a sixth year player as Oklahoma pitching coach. Jennifer Rocha is out to visit with Nicole May. You see anything here, DJ? You know, starting this inning with the single to Butte. Again, a missed pitch. We've seen a pair in this at bat alone. Big misses, and that's one thing we haven't seen from May so far in this ball game. All of her misses have been pretty tight to the zone, so starting to see a few of those bigger misses. But, you know, I think with, with Nicole, when you see that from her, Kinsey Hansen and Coach Roger do just such a great job of managing it and, and recognizing and going out and just having a second to let her take a breath and get back to it, because that's one thing May does a really good job of, of just recovering and zoning back in. I think another thing to point out, that last half inning, Oklahoma, they scored six runs. That was a long inning. Her arm gets cold, her body's not quite warm. Fly ball that will get foul and hit the back screen over there down the left field line. So some of the scores from around the Big 12 today, you had BYU beat Iowa State 8-5. Oklahoma State second consecutive run rule win over Texas Tech as they won 13 to nothing in Stillwater today. And Texas an 11-3 winner over Kansas. So Texas has taken the first two games of that series. Still waiting on UCF and Baylor after Baylor ended UCF's winning streak last night. This is launched and we got a bat flip from Rollin as she sends one way out of here to right center field. That is a two run home run. Man, I don't know if I have seen a ball go that far in this stadium. Everybody all around automatically goes, ooh, 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 ooh. That was a crazy home run. That was launched, almost went out of the entire stadium. Towering shot. More than that, the pitch location from Meg. Dead red at basically the belt. And Rollin taking it like it's BP. Like you said, 10 runs doesn't bother Houston. They are used to being able to approach games with a mindset of who is going to score the most. We know we're going to score a lot. We know our pitchers, they're down this year. We're going to have to pick it up offensively. 10th home run, RBIs 36 and 37 for Jazz Rollins. So the first two hits of the game have come in the inning. And Rollins 
Just launch that thing out of here. The bat almost went as far as the ball. Yeah, it's good. A it's a good bat flip. Flip. Almost want a replay on that one. <laughs> here is Tariah Coleman. She slashes one out into left. Third hit of the inning, and that's the first of the game for Coleman, who struck out back in the second. And again, going back to Nicole May having a long break, not only does her body get cold, but mentally as a pitcher, it is hard to stay in that zone. You saw her that just the inning prior struck out the side. Coming back in mentally, you have to find a way to get yourself zoned back in. Tria Coleman, one of the best hitters in this lineup, and she's able to make it work. Here's Shelby Smith, who started as the pitcher tonight, now the designated player. 0 for 1 at the plate. And she's the pitcher of record for the Cougars. May back with a strike. And the count is even. May did a really good job in the first and second innings of placing pitches to get Houston out of the air. Ground balls, making them use the dirt. You've kind of seen the shift here in the fourth, even the out of Kennedy Thomas in the air. So May needing to get the ball back at the knee. Swing and a miss. And May struck out the side in the third. But the trouble here in the fourth count is all square at 2-2. Two -two. If you're Houston, take advantage until Nicole May gets back in that rhythm. Take advantage. Bouncing ball to third. Brito cut it off. She'll go to second for one. Hodges' return is in time. That is the third double play turned in two games by the Sooners. And the inning is over. Two run homers back to the circle for Houston. And it will be Quincy Lilio to lead things off for the Sooners. Walked and scored in the five run. Six run, beg your pardon, sooner third. Back to back off speeds. Waiters, that is something that we have not seen from Houston from the first two pitchers from Smith and Edwards. is what throws Oklahoma off balance, is being able to mix up those speeds. What well, throws Oklahoma off balance? I mean, any hitter, right? I mean, I think, Mindy, you and I would stand by. The most important pitch in this game is the off speed, plain and simple. Why don't more utilize it more often? <laughs> I don't, <laughs> this is terrible <laughs> to say, but I'm gonna say it. And there's another tremendous off speed from waiters. I don't think that there are enough that have the confidence to throw it in any count. And what makes it so effective for waiters, she throws it in any count. It's and it does not matter. Lilio tried to wait back on that one. Fouls it out of play. But it also, as a hitter, makes you think. Because mm -hmm. if you're in the box and you're standing, you're going, I already got two change-ups. No way does she go here again. And then she does it, and then you're thinking, okay, no way again. But maybe, do I sit hard? Do I sit soft? Where do I go? Up and in to Quincy Lilio this time. And a full count. playing out in right field. Ella Parker is the designated player at this point. And ball four to start the fourth. And I like the call. I like the three, two off speed. But again, you run that fine line of execution and Waiters has that confidence in that pitch. We've seen it time and time again. And it's a great call, but you also, again, that's, that's the risk you run. I will say that was as close as you could get 
without getting that call to strike. Quincy Lilio was taking the whole way. She was frozen. It was just barely missed low. Riley Boone is one for two with a single and a run scored in this game. There's that off speed. Do you think you have to be cautious? If you start to overthrow it as a batter, you're just saying, I know I'm going to get at least two change-ups as that bat. I'm not even going to care if you pipe in a strike that's hard. I'm going to be sitting off speed the entire way. So being able to mix it up to where it's still unpredictable. Lined into left field by Boone, who has her second hit of the night and the 11th for the Oklahoma offense. And just, uh, this crowd loves Riley Boone. <laughs> How can you not, right? She just brings, she's just a spark, man. But, you know, talking about sitting late, you can see Riley Boone. That was not an off-speed pitch, but sitting late and taking it the other way. So she's on time to get rid of the off-speed with two strikes. It was low and away, though. It's true. In that pitch setup. Just makes you wait. Good piece of hitting from Boone. Ella Parker's been on base twice, had a single in the first, and then walked in the third. One for two officially. That one's skimming that outer corner, borderline. This is the first time that Waiters has thrown two balls in a row. So Ella Parker, one pitch away from walking for the second straight at bat. Sooners won eight nothing last night. Lead 10-2 here this evening. Same two teams will wrap up their series tomorrow afternoon. That is a one o'clock first pitch. And then Oklahoma is off to Orlando to take on UCF next weekend. Houston will be hosting Texas Tech in Big 12 play. They have a midweek game against Texas A&M, though. Oklahoma with no midweek contest. It's crazy to think about. You think about the last couple of series. In the air to left, and Butte has that for the first out. But OU going BYU. Houston, UCF, I mean, that's brand new Big 12 opponents in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back weeks. And it'll be all brand new again next year when the Sooners hit the SEC. <laughs> new scouts every single time. Yes. And I also think about the coaches at Houston. First year, they're having to not just join a team, join a team with 13 others who are transferring in, but create a culture. And then they're moving conferences and they're having to create brand new game plans. See, they can't rely on any other scouting reports prior. That makes it so difficult. So this for sure is a year for them to build. And you add the travel to that as well. I mean, yeah. that's a completely different set the competition level is higher. Mm -hmm. And though the record overall not what the Cougars would like in the Big 12 at 3-16, and 16, they have a win over number two Texas. Biggest win in program history has come this season. They beat Texas 12-10 to 10 on March the 2nd. Kristen Vesley just happy to be back in Norman, where she was an All-American player for Patty Gasso. She said it was not great to get reintroduced to Norman traffic. She said that sounds <laughs> odd coming from someone who's from Houston. As you can relate, DJ. Fly ball to left, Butte under it, two down. I was going to say, I'm like, that's an interesting comment from <laughs> someone that's lived in the Houston area as long as Kristen Vesley has. I grew up in Houston, and I, I know firsthand how crazy that traffic can get. I'm pretty lucky. We haven't dealt with it much since moving there. No, you are lucky. This is just a Houston-studded weekend, I guess. I guess so. 
Alyssa Brito with two down and runners at first and second. Sooners unable to move Willio or Riley Boone after they reached to start the inning. Brito's had a good night, a walk, a triple, and a single. And this is where Oklahoma has been inconsistent the past few games. They get the first two runners on, and then you get two quick outs. I understand the mix of speeds, the changing of speeds, but being able to move your runners, keeping them still. In the air, shallow right field, and good communication. The second baseman, Aguilar, takes care of the final out. So Oklahoma, and kind of cool evening at Love's Field. Oklahoma going for the run rule here in the top of the fifth and going for the season victory. It's been an interesting wind today. It's like a northeast kind of swirling over at Gaylord Family Memorial Stadium. The flags can't really make up which way they want to go. <laughs> Odd. As Brito set to lead things off against Nicole May. Cantu, she had that long, hard hit ball, took Riley Boone into that right center gap, right on the wall. Most RBIs on the team, there's a lot of power, and it makes sense that she is in that lower area of the lineup, that tail end of the heart of the lineup, because that's when most of the runners get on base. They want somebody who can hit them in whenever there's a lot of traffic on the field. And this is a big out for Nicole May. I mean, Cantu, with the power and what she does with the stick. But the 789 of this Houston lineup doesn't quite have the production. So big spot here to get a couple quick outs and not roll this lineup back over to the top for Butte and Thomas. Cantu 0 for 2 this weekend in the series with a walk last night. Boone, she shaded over to that right center gap. She remembers. <laughs> she remembers the power that Cantu had. It'll stay two and two as this one bounds past Kristen Vesley in the third base coach's box. Oklahoma trying to go to 17 and three and stay a full game ahead of Texas atop the Big 12. It would be win number 41 on the season for the Sooners. Three and two. Big pitch here for May. Big pitch here for Cantu. <laughs> And that's big. That is big regardless of what the score is, being able to have the discipline. And I do think that one did miss. It did. And that's just, you already said it, Mindy, the discipline. I mean, you can't get much tighter than that. And can too, not biting on that pitch. And, you know, I go back to this as well, as it looks like Houston's going to go to the bench for a pinch runner. But one thing Nicole May has kind of done here in the fourth and now into the fifth. She's had a couple big misses and you see her get ahead in counts, miss in the dirt, maybe miss a little wide. And it makes that three, two borderline pitch that again, it was outside, but you're not going to get that call when you haven't been tight with your misses. Jordy Wilkins is the pinch runner at first base. This is bunted by Aguilar. May will throw down to second. Tiare Jennings takes the throw. And the Sooners get the lead runner. In the situation when Oklahoma is up 10 to 2, I understand you wanting to bunt and get the runner into scoring position because you don't want to get run ruled. If you can get one more run across, you can avoid the run rule. But on the other on the other side of that, Nicole May's a great fielding yes. pitcher. And if you're going to do it, it has to be executed better than that. Find an alley. But right back to Nicole May in the circle. I mean, no shot. 
So Houston going to pinch hit, and Oklahoma going to make a change in the circle. Patty Gasso is out to call upon Peyton Monticelli, the Wisconsin transfer out of Cedarburg, Wisconsin. And it looks like Houston will pinch hit here with Katie Reppa. But here's Peyton Monticelli, one season at Wisconsin, hard at throwing right-hander, and she'll try to close it out and get the final couple of outs here, DJ. And Monticelli, the hardest thrower on this staff. She has tremendous velocity, and I think the biggest thing for Monticelli in her career so far as a Sooner is simply trying to find that balance between having that velocity and spotting up pitches. So I like Monticelli in this spot. 8-9 in the Houston lineup, but has tremendous velo, and she's done a good job coming into games late out of the bullpen and just slamming the door. It's a huge difference when you've got someone that throws nearly 70 <laughs> coming out late in a game. If you're Houston, Monticelli, she struggles, like you said, managing her velocity and throwing strikes. Mm -hmm. So you want to be disciplined because she does miss over the plate often. You want to be disciplined and ready for that pitch whenever it comes. Because like we just talked about, the reason for that bunt, they want to get runners into scoring position. They want to score. If they get one more run, the run rules off. They're living to see another inning. Right now, that is their singular focus. There's Nicole May in position to pick up her 12th win of the year. The line on the Sooner starting pitcher tonight. Four and a third innings. Three hits, two runs, both earned with a walk and four strikeouts. Also threw one wild pitch. And Monticelli on to try to finish the job. Katie Reppa will pinch hit for Brooke Lorenzo in the number eight spot. We saw Repa pinch it last night as well. 0 for 1. Monticelli, an ERA of 1.29. 16 and a third innings. 22 strikeouts and only seven walks. Time called there, they reset the pitch clock. And 0 and 2. And Repa hacking first two pitches she's seen from Monticelli. Houston, an aggressive team, but you've got a pitcher coming in out of the bullpen, a pinch hitter as well. Not a bad opportunity to see a couple pitches. First time that Monticelli has pitched since the Texas series. Last time she was in a game was on April the 6th. Getting her back out there into competition. Just a sophomore. And this is great for her confidence because in that appearance against Texas, she didn't throw a single strike. So you want to come in, you want to regain your confidence. But Houston, like you said, Repa coming out swinging early. Oh, and that one overthrown by Kenzie Hansen. That was good backup by T.R.A. Jennings. That one gets through. The runner at first advances to second. And again, that is what Houston wants. They want that runner in scoring position. Less than two outs. They're trying to avoid the run roll. Shot foul and out of play by Repa. Tell you what, she has been battling this at bat. Got 0-2 pretty quickly, but she's fouled off about three or four already. Monticelli pounding the zone. A little bit of a split grip, trying to stay through that ball as long as she can. Good hold there. That is tempting. I like that location for Monticelli it's because deliberate. it's so close to wherever that zone is. And you know a hitter that likes to swing and likes to be aggressive. That up pitch is hard to resist. 
Reppa lines this one. Diving in comes Hannah Core. It is a catch. The Sooners throw in behind the runner, and it's a double play to end the game on a run rule. Hannah Core. Now they're going to review this, so the Sooners are celebrating here, but I see Kristen Vesley asking for an appeal, and she's going to send both runners back out there. So first, was there a catch, and then was there a tag at first base? Regardless, though, right now, catch doubled off game over. However, you've got some moving parts here because Aguilar took off back to first base. So if they do say, there's at least an out on the field somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> it could either be a base hit and the runner tagged out in between first and second for an out or a double play. They could call no tag at first base. It could be one out there. You're right, a lot of moving parts, DJ. And you we saw. don't have the benefit of showing you a replay. We apologize for that. And a core just on the screen. We know what she wants. She said, please, 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 please. But either way, I think on that, it may even be a double play. Even if Hannah Core didn't catch it, again, we don't have replay, so we can't tell. So if you're at home, rewind, see it. But I think whenever Elena Torres, she didn't step on the back. She tagged the runner, mm -hmm. but then her foot Stepped went on, on the, the back, back before. Well, and coupled with that, that ball was hit. Lorenzo Rapa. went backward. In the, fr in the first baseline. Yeah, so she would I'm be out you. as well. I, I don't think that she ever, did she ever tag first base, Lorenzo? And no. even, the ball was hit so hard. And even if she did, she took steps backward. I mean, so there's a lot of things to look at here. And, you know, whether or not, I think it's probably even dicier if they do say that it wasn't a catch because there were so many base running things that are still going to put outs on the board. So, I mean... Right. Uh, and whenever you review, it makes it difficult because you can only select one yep. thing. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at this. The umpires have to ignore everything else. They have to look at that and make their call on the play for that specific thing. And on that one, it's probably, did she catch that ball? Mm -hmm. but there's Kaylee Young, who has emerged to talk with Sooner head coach Patty Gasso. So, it could be a line out and a tag at first base for a double play. It could be a base hit that never happened because the runner didn't get to first and was thrown out by the left fielder before she reached first base with a tag on the runner going between first and second. But either way, even if they're looking. I think it's a double play either way. I mean, Aguilar's out regardless. Aguilar got tagged. Yeah, she's, she's out. out. And by Torres stepping on the bag before Repa does, either way, it is a double play. It should be. Wow, what an at-bat from yes. Reppa going 0-2, battling, battling, fouling off these balls. Monticelli with the speed, and also you saw her ease off that speed a little bit, and then Hannah Core that throw from left field. All right, we have an adjudication. Michael Parker, Keith Kearney have emerged. No catch. So now they're trying to put runners at first and second, but there was a tag of a runner and a tag of first base. Yeah, that's, here's the deal. Aguilar came off the bag, so if they're going to say it was not a catch, Aguilar is still out. And you can see Alina Torres signaling, I tagged out that runner before she got to the bag. But when an out is indicated by the umpire, and then that is overruled, I'm not sure that you can judge that runner out. That's the true. The runner was told there was a catch, so instead of trying to go to second, she immediately tries to go back to first. And that may be the explanation Patty Gasso is being given here. The runner can only go by what the umpire tells her. And that's a good point. And you can see JT Gasso having the same conversation <laughs> going. But it's not, that's not something you see happen very often. It is not. So it is a base hit for Reppa, and this game's gonna go on. It looks like we may have a pinch hitter, and we will. So Katie Reppa is a good point you made, Nicole, an excellent at bat by her just to keep it going. And now the run that could take off the run rule is in scoring position, which is exactly what Houston wanted. So once again, no catch, 
And because an out was indicated by the umpire at third base, you cannot tag that runner out in between first and second base. And with the catch or not catch for core, I think it is the right call. And watching it live, I know we didn't have replay, but you could see her get her glove underneath, but you saw the green. And a big rip at the first pitch. You can see head coach Kristen Vesley kind of giving the calm down. Take yeah, that's, a minute. That's a good point. It's There's a lot of energy, a pretty charged up situation here. And Monticelli deals a little bit low with that one. If you're Houston, you're grateful, yes. Not only was that not a catch, but also you have runners in scoring position with only one out instead of two. Zekwa Dumas is the pinch hitter for the Cougars. And Monticelli misses in. That inside pitch has been difficult. Nicole May against righty specifically. Nicole May, she struggled with locating that pitch. Monticelli, two really good pitches. Struggled with that, but if he's not calling it, no reason to swing, especially in a big situation like this. Dumas wheels through that pitch, and the count is two and two. Full count, a walk loads the bases. At the top of the order, Lair Butte on deck and will bat, barring a double play. And if you're Houston, you just, you're not aiming for a home run, you're aiming to get quality at bats, hit the ball hard, score one run. Bases are loaded and the lineup has been rolled over. So a pinch hit walk for Zekwa Dumas. And that Houston dugout erupted on that walk. I love whenever, obviously the situation calls for it, but I love whenever a team acknowledges, man, this is a big moment. This is a big time deal. We will have a pinch runner at first base as well. I think that's Holsey coming back in. You're right, it is Holsey. Nolsey, who was pinch hit for there, comes back in, re-enters, and runs for Dumas, who drew the walk. So it is Holsey at first. They've got Repa, who had the base hit to left at second base, and Aguilar is the runner at third, which could potentially take off a run rule. There, Butte, the batter. She had a base hit and then scored on the Rollin home run in the fourth. And Kristen Vesley, I think, is going to get a runner at third as well. Yes, we will see Mandy Esman come and run. And you can just see Vesley doing anything she can to get quickness on the base paths and trying to find a way to extend this ball game. Good spot here for Houston. I mean, we, we said it at the, the top half of this inning of this is a team that is used to being in these types of positions and having to fight and claw their way back with the sticks. Monticelli goes to work against Butte. Now Monticelli's having to face that top half of the lineup. A lot of production. Butte, last time, she's had two hard hit ground balls. One, the very beginning, very first play of the game, Avery Hodge had a great backhand, but the second one, it got through. If you're Monticelli, you want to go after her, but you got to be careful. Base is loaded and a really good hitter up. Timeout taken. And each batter that has faced Monticelli since she has entered this game has hacked first pitch. Every single one. And Monticelli, we said, hardest thrower on the staff, but does not have the most effective off-speed pitch. So it gives Houston the opportunity to sit on one speed. 
And now Kristen Besley has called time to walk down the line and. And this is giving her batter time to reset. Trying to throw Monticelli off pace. I love how Kenzie Hansen runs out there, gets the pitch that she wants to throw. Hey, what are you feeling? What are you thinking? Let's get this pitch. Let's get out of this inning. Poke to third, up with it, Brito coming home to get the force play there as Hansen takes the throw. And the Sooners able to cut down Esman, who was the pitch runner at third. Two down. The pitch location from Monticelli, getting Boutet to put the ball on the ground. Again, this is a Houston team. Power, bases loaded, less than two outs, and finding a way to let the infield work. A flare down the left field line off the bat of Kennedy Thomas is fouled. So does Reppa, the runner at third. You've got Hulsey at second base. And Butte safe at first on the fielder's choice. The potential run to take off the run rule at third and now two down. Kennedy Thomas 0 for 2 is grounded to short and fly to left tonight. Crowds into it. <laughs> they are in that pitch just on that outside in the river. It is skimming that plate, but just not close enough, especially with an umpire who consistently hasn't been calling that one for a strike. It's a good first nibble for Peyton Monticelli. I like the location. High chopper. Short hop play by Jennings, and the Sooners win it. Monticelli able to get out of a bases loaded one out situation tonight. They get a two run single from Kenzie Hansen to start the scoring. Cassidy Pickering with an RBI triple. Ella Parker an RBI walk. Tiare Jennings and Kenzie Hansen factoring in. And Oklahoma takes the first two games of this series. Nicole, you're